The yield on the two year and 10 year Treasury notes inverted for the first time since 2007 last week, rattling investors who consider the inversion to be a recession signal. Now that we've seen some of those yields come off the lows, is there still cause for concern? Joining us from the CBOE trading floor is Tim Bigham. He is the lead option strategist at Delta Derivatives. Uh, Tim, there seems to be a debate, at least uh, within the administration, about whether this yield curve can be called an inversion, what we saw last week. Um, you know, we heard Peter Navarro on, over the weekend talking about how the spread wasn't big enough to say that this is actually a recession signal. How do you read the lines? Yeah, if you look at it on a spread basis uh, or, or a percentage basis, makes all the difference in the world. We're at such low rates here. I think that's one thing to absolutely consider. We have the 10-year uh, near historic lows, the 30-year at historic lows. So interest rates just generally low across the board. And I think a lot of that inversion comes from the fact that uh, rates around the world are uh, mainly negative. So uh, that one and a half percent or so 10 year yield looking pretty attractive. So a lot of the stuff that normally would apply to that yield curve inversion, getting a little bit uh, morphed here simply by the fact that uh, money is so cheap around the world. And the fact that GDP is still, uh, last I looked, you know, 2.2 on GDP now from the Atlanta Fed. So GDP actually above uh, that 10 year rate kind of makes that normal uh, uh, you know, yield curve inversion mm. normally is the reverse of that. So a lot of differences here. So until growth actually slows, I'm kind of a believer this is more of an anomaly than an actual uh, normal kind of recession indicator. So considering those easy monetary policies outside of the U.S., that being a bit of a distortion of what's happening uh, with yields here in the U.S. right now, how do you think investors should be reading the moves in the bond market? Yeah, I think uh, if you look at something like the TLT, which basically is the 20 year uh, bond here, this has had, you know, a historic run here as everyone's just running for yield anywhere on the curve here, which kind of lends uh, support to some of the yield stocks uh, in the S&P 500, some of those bank stocks, which normally might be hurt a little bit more by that, uh, you know, yield inversion, probably getting more of a bid because of their high dividend yield. I kind of like playing, uh, you know, the little bit of growth, little bit of yield, the, let's call them the Coca-Colas and Procter Gambles of the world. Certainly the Warren Buffett stocks, uh, he's buying banks here simply based on that yield. So I think it'll staunch any kind of big sell-off here in the U.S., given the fact that we're still growing uh, compared to the rest of the world, and we still have a uh, nice dividend yield on stocks. What are some of the sectors that you think investors should be staying away from? Yeah, I think uh, any of the ones that have kind of gotten out over their skis, also the ones that really don't pay much of yield, those high growth ones, growth absolutely is slowing here. So some of the high beta names, I would probably be very leery here. Uh, and I would also probably steer away from some of the ones uh, that, uh, you know, probably have gotten the utilities of the world that really don't have much growth, just a pure yield play. So kind of a barbell strategy on the uh, really low beta, really a high beta and stay away from those middle of the road kind of stocks, I think are the ones that are going to outperform over the coming months. You know, it certainly seems like things have turned jittery since the last Fed meeting, not just here in the U.S., but on data outside of the U.S. We've talked about China. We've talked about the slowdown over in Europe as well. Um, looking ahead to later this week when we are going to hear from Jay Powell over in Jackson Hole, um, what are you looking to, to hear from him in terms of how the Fed, Fed is viewing uh, the global outlook and, you know, what in fact, um, how in fact they're characterizing uh, this, uh, these additional rate cuts that are expected to come. I mean, are we still in this mid-cycle adjustment? I think it'll be tough, you know, uh, Jay Hole. I think it'll have to walk that kind of tightrope where you can't hit a too big of a slowdown, but you have to give at least a couple rate cuts a big likelihood here. The market's kind of priced that in already. So uh, I think it'll be a little bit of a dance here, certainly some dovish talk, but if it leans too dovish, I think that might spook the markets as well. So I think I uh, have to hint that growth still remains uh, strong, although somewhat slowing, but uh, we are maybe looking at some interest rate cuts just to make sure that growth doesn't slow too much. I think that would kind of suit the markets. We're also seeing the rest of the world continue to cut as much as they can, although they're running out of bullets in the chamber across the board on that, certainly.
look at the, the market reaction on the back of, of the last rate cut from the Fed. Um, you know, that seemed to be wiped out right away with um, the, the tariff threat that followed. Um, how big of a catalyst do you expect an additional rate cut in September to be for the markets? Or has that a 25 basis point already been priced in? I think 25 in September and then probably another 25 by the least, you know, end of the year. So 50 basis points, I think, is certainly priced in. If after September they hint that maybe they may be not looking at another one, that may kind of spook the markets. But uh, certainly I don't think we'll get that, you know, full 100 uh, basis point cut that the administration wants. But 50 basis points, I think, will be kind of the sweet spot here. 25 in September, 25 probably by December, and then see where things go here. But U.S. growth is still okay here, certainly compared to the rest of the world. Okay, Tim, appreciate you taking the time today. You bet, anytime, Akiko.